<laughs> oh well. So, last weekend was WA Day here in Perth and everyone gets the Monday off work and mum's school had Friday off work as well. So we decided since quarantine we'd been stuck at home and we're all going a little bit stir crazy that we would head down south for the weekend. And that's what we did. So I assumed it was going to be super busy down there because literally all our regional borders had closed for ages. So everyone from Perth wasn't allowed down south and vice versa. The unprecedented step of introducing regional boundaries. So I was assuming every man and his dog was going to go down south for WA Day. So we, instead of camping like we probably normally would have in the campsite or even in the cabin in the campsite, I did a little research on Airbnb and I found this gorgeous little tiny house called The Cabin on the Dam. For $80 a night, you get like this little bungalow of a shed. It looks like a shed. And inside there, there's just a bed and a desk and a place to put your clothes. There's also a heater in there because it's such a small room. The heater warms the entire thing up really quickly. Um, and it's great because it's middle of winter here. Well, it's not middle of winter. It's start of winter here. So it was quite cold outside, but as soon as you go in there, it's like a sauna. It's in the town called Quindalup. It's kind of inland from Dunsborough, about four minutes inland from Dunsborough, and it's in also inland from Yelling Up as well. So like, if <laughs> so, it's in the middle of nowhere pretty much surrounded by these beautiful farmhouses but travel five minutes and then you're in town centre with all the hustle and bustle like it's the best of both worlds and I thought the pictures aren't even that great on Airbnb but I thought let's just do it and we'll see how it goes it might be super super dodgy but I'm so glad we did because honestly it is so beautiful Too hot for that pee. Not this beautiful lady named Kate, who is the owner, greeted us and gave us the keys, gave us a little tour. And um, yeah, then we made it to our little home. So you have to park at their house and then walk down to your little cabin. And from the far, it just looks like a shed. But then you go in and it's so beautiful. This is our little home. So, we have our bed. <laughs> and then over here we have a little desk. And so our bed. Happened? Wow, that's our little home. And then when you come out here, shut the door so the bugs don't get in. And then this way is our bar with a beautiful view of the dam. And then if you come this way, should take the lid off the bar. This is a fire pit where we can roast some marshmallows. little chill out spot for yoga and just to chill out on the couch over here is a little outdoor kitchen you have the sink the fresh water that is rain water so this is all fresh water some wine electric fry pan kettle toaster that's all you need really and the fridge all right now we go bush walking Toilet. <laughs> that is our toilet and it's a compost toilet so you put your duty in there and that's it. It's a beautiful view from the toilet. Shut that back up. That 
wash your little sink there to wash your hands. And then we go up here. This is where they collect all the rainwater. This is car locker. The little caravan where if you have extra people you can stay the night. So there's two other beds in here, a little sink, how cute is she? And when you come out here, there's just all bushland. There's all like all kangaroos, chicks, hens, chickens and some horses. If you walk this way, down the little bush track, you find this beautiful dam. Wow. And that is our little home. The dam is completely theirs, so they own it, they maintain it. Um, there's heaps of ducks and there's this one black swan that lives on the dam. The other side is farmland with all their sheep and a few horses and the kangaroos visit there every day. I later made the effort of blowing up a huge pink flamingo and I let it loose in the dam. I'm gonna get drenched. <laughs> Ready? What if I fly into the middle and can't get back? <laughs> Thinking of it, this probably wasn't the best idea. It took a very long time to blow up and as soon as I got in it, it started raining. But it was an experience. This is such a bad idea. It's raining. The dam was really cold. Oh, so cold. But in the summer, apparently it's beautiful for swimming. All the reviews on Airbnb said it was an awesome place to go for a swim. So if you walk a little bit up on the hill from our house, that's their house there on the right, the big orange thing. Their house is huge huge um they've got like a big butler's kitchen and stuff and then you go down the little stairs and you find another fire pit and their side of the dam i suppose you can say there's also a little bridge that takes you over to the other side of the farmland um and then at the back of their property is a veggie garden and it, it was so cool they had a cute little scarecrow um so many vegetables And they, they let you help yourself to all the veggies. So every day we would go and pick out the stuff that we needed for dinner or to make our dinner. Yeah. 
the kitchen. It is an outdoor kitchen, so it is obviously quite small. There's only a sink and the fridge as the main utilities as such. And there's also an electric fry pan, a toaster, a toasty machine and a kettle. We didn't think that there'd be a kettle or anything like that, so we were quite impressed. Um, and it's really all you need. We just took tinned soup and some veggies to last us the four days. And that was completely fine. We just heated it up in the in the electric fry pan with all the veggies that we got from their garden and brought from home and warmed it up. And yeah, it's really all you need. And it's obviously really close to the shops and stuff, so you can go out and buy meals if you really want to. But basic, but necessary. But all you need. When it got to night time, we just sat and ate our dinner and watched the fire go out. Um, the fire pit warm us, the fire pit warmed us up so much at night time. Like it is quite cold in Perth at night and the first night it was really windy as well. But he, the um, husband of Kate, Kate's husband, he can light the fire for you if you don't know how to do it yourself. And yeah, it warmed us up so much. I did get a lot of ash in my eyes, but then I learned to wear my glasses and then I didn't get ash in my eyes. Um, yeah, we just sat and enjoyed ourselves by the fire. The bath was probably one of the best parts of this house. It's, it's so deep. It was so big. Both my mum and I fit in it with our bathers on, by the way and it was huge. <laughs> um, it took a long time to fill up and the hot water takes a while to come through so you are running cold water for a long time. Um, but it's all rainwater, so it is very sustainable in the little house and we filled it up, put some bubbles in it and relaxed. Again, it was really cold outside but in the hot bath it was really warm. And we um, filled the kettle up a few times with rainwater as well and then filled it up the bath as we went along to reheat it as you like because it did get cold quite quickly but oh that was probably the best it had a beautiful view from where you are in the bath and the most relaxing thing ever in the summer it would be so cool to have a bath at like night time i think that would be pretty cool but it was a bit cold for that um a few things i would say is the toilet if you're not into like it's still a proper toilet and it's not even a drop oh it is a drop but it's a compost toilet, which is really cool. So you put your toilet roll and stuff in in the hole, which just goes into I think I think it just goes into the ground or a bucket in the ground. I, can't, I don't even know. And then there's a big pile of leaves next to you, and you've got to pull that into the toilet. At start, we thought you put the toilet roll in the leaves, but no, you do not do that. 
research it before you try. Uh, another thing I didn't show you in my little tour was the outdoor shower. It's behind the little yoga studio. Um, here's a picture of mum in it. Um, it was way too cold for a shower, but it would be pretty cool having an outdoor shower in like the summer and even in the winter, but I wasn't game enough for that. Uh, the caravan is if you want other guests to join you. So the house obviously only sleeps two people in that double bed or two people as a young child, I don't even know. Um, the caravan can sleep another two. So if you have like a girls weekend, four of you can go down there and enjoy it. So I think that's pretty cool. You'd obviously have to dibs it out for who gets the warm house with the heater, but. <laughs> so tiny homes are like little sustainable, usually storage container like homes that can usually move about. So they're usually like on wheels. There's actually something called a tiny house movement, which is an architectural and social movement that encourages living in a simpler life in a smaller space. People from all walks of life have determined that a large home, and more specifically the large cost that comes with that, is both unnecessary and a detriment to their happiness. So ultimately they are building this home to reinvent themselves, to be more sustainable and to be more happy. We found Kate's place on Airbnb and I really encourage you to go to the same just type in tiny homes, hundreds will come up. And I also recommend, if you're interested, search up on YouTube, tiny homes, because there's hundreds of really cool out there experiences you can have ev everywhere in the world. And it's a great way to make your holiday more sustainable and not go to those high end fancy hotels. You get, get to give back to the community and give back to the environment. And I think that's really special. Tiny homes are really modern and they're really in. A lot of travel bloggers and videoers go and find these tiny homes as experiences. Something a little bit different and out there rather than just staying in a villa or a hotel in the country. You get to experience a little bit more of the urban and the cultural side of things when you stay in one of these tiny homes. They usually have beautiful settings and surroundings and they're usually away from the city so you get to you get away from the hustle and bustle of everything, which is exactly what Kate's place was. Well, I hope you enjoyed my little tour of our little tiny home, and I hope I opened your mind up to the world of tiny homes so you can go visit your own one. Next, I will be showing you a little bit of what we did down south, other than enjoy our beautiful home. See ya!